Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, I'm doing a question here, question number four, uh, sorry, example four, from the P4 textbook um, and the chapter on proofs, chapter one, for a student who asked me on the channel to explain this question. This is actually an example which is explained in the book in words, written example in the book, but um, obviously the student wants me to elaborate further because they didn't understand the proof. Now, we're going to prove by contradiction that there are an infinite number of prime numbers, that, the, that you will never get a last prime number. There's no number that can be the last prime number. There's always going to be another prime number that's bigger than it. And we have to prove this here by contradiction. Now, before I go into the proof of it, um, I'm going to first of all define what a prime number is in case that's a problem. A prime number is a, a number which has exactly two factors, no more and no less. So for example, the number two. It's a prime number because it has exactly two factors. Right? There's no other way you can express two except two times one. Those are the only two factors it has, one and two. Three is also a prime number because you can only express it as three times one. The number four can be expressed as 4 times 1, but it can also be expressed as 2 times 2. So 4 is not a prime number because it has three factors. A prime number has to have exactly two factors, no more and no less. 5 is a prime number and so on. Is 1 a prime number? Well, no, because it has only one factor. It has to have exactly two factors, no more and no less. Okay, so those are prime numbers like 2, 3, 5, 7. Is 9 a prime factor, a prime number? No, because you can express it as 3 times 3 as well as 9 times 1. So, you know, 11, 13 and so on. Okay, so those are prime numbers. So what we have to do is prove by contradiction that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come back to the actual proof at, at the end, the proof that we'd write down in an exam. I want to just show you by way of some real numbers rather than some algebraic kind of letters what um, the concept is. Okay, this is not what you'd write down in a proof. I'm just trying to get you to understand and get a feel of the, uh, you know, what, what's going on. So just imagine I said to you that let 7 be the last prime number. Just imagine we assumed that 7 is the last prime number, that there's no prime numbers after 7. So listing the finite number of prime numbers, so we're now saying that there are a finite number of prime numbers, because we, we are proving by contradiction. If I list the finite number of prime numbers that I said, you have 1, 2, sorry, not 1, of course, you have um, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Those are the prime, that's all the prime numbers that exist. There's no other prime numbers apart from these. That's what we're just saying. Seven is the large prime number. There's no bigger number, uh, no prime number than it. Now, I'm going to call the number Q. Okay, let, let's have a number Q, which is the product of all these numbers, two times three times five times seven, and then I'm going to add one to that. Now, this number Q, if we try to divide it by 2, it won't work. We'll get a remainder of 1. If we, divide, if we try to divide it by 3, again, we're going to get a remainder of 1 because this number, before we added 1, is divisible by 2. If you divide it by 2, it'll be a whole number. But if you add 1 to that, of course, it won't be divisible by 2. This number is also divisible by 3 because... You know, if you divide it by 3, the 3 is cancelled, you're left with a whole number. But if you add 1 to it, then that number is not divisible by 3. And this number before we add 1 to it is divisible by 5 and by 7 for the same reason. Okay, but you add 1 to it, then it's not divisible by any of these numbers. So this number here is not divisible by any of these numbers. So we, ha we have said basically that, you know, this number here... We're saying that this number, because we've said that 7 is the last prime number, so we, we're saying that Q cannot be prime. Q cannot be prime if 7 is the last prime number. 
can't be prime because seven is the last prime number. However, we can see that when we divide it by all the prime numbers, it's not divisible by any of them. Okay, so therefore, we say that Q is prime. We can see that Q must be prime. Or if it's not prime itself, okay, then, then there is a number. If Supposing Q is not prime, there's going to be a number, okay, which is more than 7. That's a prime number that it's divisible. It's divisible by. Okay, so it's prime or Q is prime or it is divisible by a prime bigger than 7. Okay, it's divisible by, by a number by a prime that's bigger than seven. So therefore we can say that we have a contradiction. We've said that seven is a prime number, is the biggest prime number. And now we've shown that that means if seven is the last prime number, that means Q cannot be prime according to our assumption. But we've shown that Q must be prime or divisible by a number which is prime, which is bigger than these numbers. Okay, so we've proved we've got a contradiction here. We've Q is both prime according to this, and it's also uh, you know it's not prime according to this, and it's also prime according to this other statement. So we have a contradiction. That means seven cannot be the last prime number. There must be a prime number that's bigger than seven. Okay, so that's basically the principle behind this idea. Now, excuse my really bad handwriting. But um, I'm going to now try to be a bit neater when I show you the actual proof um, in an algebraic kind of way. All right. So now, supposing I say, we, first of all, we're going to prove by contradiction. So we're going to say, assume, we're going to assume that there is a last prime. number so we can say in brackets a finite number of primes finite meaning it's, it ends okay so let's call let's let the prime numbers be so I'm going to call the prime numbers algebraically I'm going to call them um, p1 p2 P3 all the way up to Pn minus 1, Pn. So Pn is the largest, is the largest prime number. Okay, is the largest prime number. That's what we're assuming. That's our, our, our assumption. Okay, now let the number Q be P1 times P2 times P3 times all the way up to Pn minus 1 times Pn. Okay, plus 1. Okay, so we can say that Q is not divisible by any of P1, P2, P3, da, 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 up to Pn. It's not divisible by any of them because when you multiply these together and you add 1 to it, you try to divide this by any of those prime numbers, there's always going to be a remainder of 1 because all those prime numbers are factors of the number before you added 1 to it. Once you add 1 to it, there's always going to be a remainder of 1. Therefore, it's not an integer. Okay? So therefore, Q cannot be an integer it's not an integer therefore Q okay um, it's not divisible by any of these numbers okay no not Q is not sorry forget that what I just said what I'm saying therefore Q must be must be a prime number must be a prime number when I say not an integer I mean after you divide it by the prime you don't get into so yeah so that, that means it, it must be a prime number okay or because it's possible that there's a number that's bigger than pn 
which Q is divisible by, but that number is going to be a prime number. Okay, so Q must be a prime number or divisible or di divisible, sorry about my handwriting, by a prime number greater than Pn. Greater than Pn. So we have a contradiction. Okay, this is a contradiction. Okay, this is a contradiction. Why? Because we said Pn so Pn cannot be the last prime. So therefore, there are an infinite number of primes. So when we, when we assumed that there was a finite number of primes, it led to a contradiction the contradiction being that there's a number that if we multiply all the prime numbers up to what we assumed was the last prime number and add one to that product then that number itself is not divisible by any of those prime numbers so therefore it must be prime or it could be that it could be divisible by a prime number that's bigger than this so therefore it's a contradiction there must be an infinite number of primes Okay, so that's the general idea about it, but, you know, you can write it with a bit better handwriting than mine, but this is what you'd have to write. Hopefully, that's clear why, um, or the proof of this is clear, you know, how this proof by contradiction works in this, uh, in this particular example. Um, it's in the book. There's plenty of videos also on YouTube you can find if you just type in, uh, the, uh, you know, the, um, you can say, you know, the infinity of primes, proof for the infinity of primes, you will find lots of different um, ex explanations and you know, um, proofs for this, um, which are all based upon this proof by contradiction, basically. So hopefully that makes it a bit clearer for you. Um, I hope that was okay. Thank you for watching. Other questions that you want to watch about proofs, you'll find I'll put them in the playlist that is over here. Okay, and if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can click on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.